Hey, welcome to D-Lab, everybody. I have a follow-up video for the Hammerland HQ150 standby switching system. I initially posted a video back in December of 2011 showing the benefits of using my new standby switching system in the HQ150. A lot of you said, hey, man, great demo, but how do you do it? Well... I'm getting around to doing it. I'm going to show you guys now. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm actually going to show you how to modify your HQ150 so that you don't have that abrupt switching when you use your TR switch. Currently the HQ150 switches the high voltage which is like 300 volts DC. So when you turn that on and off it'll knock your eardrums out if you're running headphones. So what I do is simply convert that standby switching the same way that National did it on the NC300. Let me show you. Here is the actual schematic of the HQ150. If you follow this high voltage line coming off R51, it goes up here, over here, to the front panel standby receive switch or your rear terminal relay terminal board and it actually turns on and off the B plus that's feeding the receiver okay so when you flip that switch on and off you're actually making and breaking the high voltage and you get a very abrupt pop in your audio not only is that a problem but it's also an issue that you have 300 volts sitting on that rear terminal that you're taking over to your Dow key relay okay so we have a hazard and we've got some terrible noise that's generated when you're flipping the switch or using your external TR switch. Now one thing I want to note, if you take a look right here, you'll see the sensitivity knob, okay, which is an RF gain knob. That is a 10K pot. So keeping that in mind, let's go over to the NC300 schematic and see how they do it. Here we are, the NC300. Here is our rear standby terminal board okay you can see there's a ground and you got standby it goes over here through a 10k resistor to ground and there is our transmit receive switch okay so if you were to follow this line you'll see go up here it actually grounds the cathode of the 6aq5 output so when you go to standby it raises that okay then if you go up here and swing over this way there is the RF gain control and guess what it's also a 10k pot this system breaking the ground is a seamless transmit receive function there's no popping it simply removes the low side of the RF gain and at the same time removes the cathode ground from the 6AQ5 output tube it's the best of both worlds guys and that is what I'm going to do to the HQ-150. Let's go. Alright, so let's first shoot a before and after. Alright, so here is the HQ-150 with the standard standby system. Okay, so if you had a TR switch, you'd be in transmit. There's your receive. That might not seem so bad, but I guarantee you if you have contacts on your TR switch that are a little bit dirty when you switch it'll go kabam so another thing to keep in mind is since we're not turning on and off the B plus the HQ 150 will be much more stable because the voltage regulators and all your oscillators are still seeing that B plus and they're stabilized when you turn on and off the B plus everything has to start back up all right, so we've got three things to do. Number one, we're gonna tie the high voltage together to where it is not switched anymore. I already landed a terminal board here. This is the rear standby terminal block, okay? Then, we're gonna take the standby switch up front. One side of that will simply switch 
to ground. Then we're going to go to the sensitivity pot and we're going to find that 30 ohm resistor that is currently going to ground. We're going to lift it. Okay. So we're going to lift that and that's going to tie to our standby switching. And then if we go down here to the 6V6, we're going to lift the low side of the cathode bias resistor and that will also be switched. So the ground would be switched on the 6V6. The ground would be switched up here on the standby switch. High voltage is all tied together. And we're going to parallel it to the standby terminals on the back of the receiver. So we're simply switching ground, which removes the hazard to, to those terminals. And you're going to get a much smoother TR switching action on your HQ150. Installation of the new standby switching is complete on the Hammerlin 150. So let me walk you through everything I did and then at the end of this video I'll post a diagram so you can accomplish this yourself pretty easily. So here is the old standby terminals. I strapped a 10K across those terminals and you can see the wire runner going to ground. So your switching now will be from ground to this side of the 10K. I added this terminal board and that's where all of the high voltage meets. That used to go to the standby terminals. Now you just tie them all together. So I used this little one lug terminal board for that purpose and I just screwed it into the shield plate. Okay. All right, now let's go over to the standby switch. I added a ground runner to the bottom lug of the standby switch. And then the top lug now has our new runner that's going to go and do the switching. Right here you see this 62K resistor with two wires joined. That used to go to the standby switch when it turned on and off high voltage. So you're going to take all those and tie them together. Okay? And yeah, it'd be a good idea to put a little bit of heat shrink here to insulate it. So if you follow this brown wire from the standby switch, which is now switching to ground, he goes up here to this terminal board and there just happened to be an unused lug right here. Okay, Then you've got this 30 ohm resistor that used to swing down and just go to ground. And the other side went to a white and blue wire that went up to the sensitivity pot or your RF gain pot. Okay, So they're meeting at this point. And then these wires, you see the two browns, this brown takes off and goes to our standby terminal. The other one goes to our standby switch. So those two are back in parallel. Then we have our third wire. You can see him taking off down here. Swings down through the RF cavity and he goes down to the cathode resistor of the 6V6. Okay. So when you go to standby mode you're raising the ground on the 6V6 and you're raising the ground on the sensitivity pot or RF gain pot just like the NC300 did. So this update transforms the standby system of an HQ150 into a NC300 type of switching system. The only difference would be instead of a 6AQ5 output tube you're using a 6V6. Alright let me cut to the schematic real quick so you guys can review that. And the next question you're probably asking is, what kind of voltage now am I switching on my standby terminals? It used to be 300 volts. So why don't we measure and see what it is now? Right, so I've got the Hammerlin fired up. I do not have an antenna connected for this test. Here's my standby receive switch. So right now I'm in receive and there's standby. It still operates the way it did stock. Now we're going to go to standby. In this case, I have no audio because the receiver is in standby. All right. So if we look over here, so we see about 36 volts DC, and that is the cathode voltage of that 6V6 that is now floating above ground. So if I all right, so let's simulate your external TR switch contacts using this little toggle switch. Okay. Or perhaps this could be one of those MFJ units that have the little muting output that simply grounds that line. 
All right, so we're going to go to receive mode. And now you want to transmit. Receive. Transmit. You can see how quiet that is. I guarantee you the old hammerland would be snapping and popping. And rather than having 36 volts, you'd have over 300 volts. So this also eliminates that hazard. All right, you guys have been asking for some ham time. There you go, a really cool update for your Hammerlin HQ150. If I have time, I might put this thing on a future episode of the Hammered Ham. Hope you enjoyed, see you again.